You may have already seen a couple of my previous episodes on 23andMe and you may have noticed that I actually haven't gone through my complete result breakdown and for some reason it feels like this is probably how you end up getting hacked. Not everyone is comfortable sharing this information which is exactly why I want to share it with the world. In my case I did both Ancestry and Health so let's have a look at what came out as my Ancestry report. Now since I first saw these results and I wasn't quite impressed, I did sign up to their beta feature in which case they can break down your ancestry report further. It comes up with broadly South Asian but likely to be from the state of Gujarat which yeah once again I already know my family is from Gujarat, no surprise there but definitely much better than it saying you're from South Asia. Uh, South Asia comprises of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, a few countries that consist of most of the people living on planet Earth. But it does get more interesting than that. Now, when I go through the ancestry composition feature of 23andMe, it says that I inherited this 100% South Asian feature between 1960 and 1930. That's when my ancestors gave me these 100% genes. Those are my parents, of course. And something also interesting, if you have some variation in your ancestry, uh, is you can look at what chromosome that ancestry comes from. From. In my case, everything is South Asian, everything is painted the same color, so uh, not that useful in my case. Now, something really easy to miss is the haplogroup feature. So, you've got your maternal haplogroup, only mothers pass on mitochondrial DNA to their offspring. So, you've definitely got all of your mitochondrial DNA coming from your mother's line and her mother and her mother. And in my case, it says that my maternal haplogroup is M3. Haplogroup L, which was the original, the OG of the haplogroups, evolved in into haplogroup L3 which was also in Africa and then moved on to changing into haplogroup M at some point in time and it also shows where that probably happened and where those haplogroup people migrated on that's how haplogroup M migrated across the world and it does mention that one in 5823 me customers share my haplogroup so it seems to be quite a common haplogroup now in the case of my paternal haplogroup I found this a bit more interesting so my paternal haplogroup uh, is CM130 and once again uh, like everyone else we started with haplogroup A in Africa and somehow about 60,000 years ago according to 23andMe haplogroup CM130 was formed and today CM130 is only carried by one in 140,000 23andMe customers so uh, they say it's extremely rare among 23andMe customers most likely because it was formed 60,000 years ago there have been so many opportunities in the world for people's DNAs for paternal haplogroup DNA to have changed since so this is why we have so much variation in the world of course and the people that originally were CM130 that migrated to other countries started to accumulate different mutations of course like everyone else does and eventually after 60,000 years of course we have much more variation in our DNA and this is why although CM130 was formed so long ago uh, it's not commonly seen today because most people have already mutated their CM130 haplogroups into something else. Now something really interesting about the C haplogroup that I found is that Genghis Khan also had a C haplogroup it is believed and he had haplogroup CM217 and this is commonly believed to have been the haplogroup of Genghis Khan and when Genghis Khan spread his genes widely in Asia his haplogroup spread around Asia and we can see that today as well. Now something really interesting is that my haplogroup CM130 is not that commonly found in India, it's actually commonly found in Central Asia, in Eastern Russia, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, uh, China and a bit in Japan and Korea. I'm definitely recommending everyone to check out their own haplogroup and read about how their story came about. So now I'm going to go through my health report. I'm going to go through all of it and it's picked that I inherit one allele that gives me a greater risk of developing age-related macular degeneration and late onset Alzheimer's disease. But luckily there's really nothing else here. They have tested celiac disease, Parkinson's disease. That doesn't mean necessarily that I can't get any of those. It just means that those common SMPs aren't present in my DNA. So they think that I'm at a lower risk, not at a zero risk, but at a lower risk of developing the other disorders or the other diseases. It's gone through a lot of disorders to check if I am a carrier of these disorders and all sorts of other things as well that I haven't really heard of. 
Now let's get to the interesting stuff. When it goes through wellness, it talks about things that aren't really disorders. They're just things that define you as a person. You've got the alcohol flush reaction, unlikely to flush, uh, caffeine consumption, likely to consume less. May I say here that I am a bit of a caffeine addict. Deep sleep, more likely to be a deep sleeper, spot on, I am. Uh, genetic weight, predisposed to weigh less than average. Uh, you can be the judge of that. Lactose intolerant, likely intolerant muscle composition common in elite power athletes i'm not a power athlete but yeah whatever and you've got sleep movement here likely average or less movement uh i don't know ability to match musical pitch less likely probably why i'm not a singer uh asparagus odor detection i can smell definitely don't have a bold spot <laughs> yet bitter taste likely can taste bitterness yeah i think i can can't everyone taste bitterness uh, cheek dimples, likely no dimples. Okay, right. They they have mentioned slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro, but I'm gonna say that I love cilantro, so that's not true. Uh, likely no cleft chin. More likely to get dandruff. Uh, likely detached earlobes. I think these count as detached, do they? What do you think? Likely no hair loss. Not yet, anyway. Likely wear earwax. Um, okay. Likely brown or hazel eyes. Looks like it on camera. Less likely than average to be afraid of heights. Likely ring finger longer. Ring finger is definitely longer. Likely little freckling. More likely to experience hair photo bleaching. I haven't had that yet, I think. Likely straight or wavy. Wait, what other types of hair are there? Less likely to have thick hair. Yeah, my hair is pretty thin actually. Likely dark hair, the definition of dark. More likely to hate chewing sounds. Definitely spot on. I hate chewing sounds so much. I've never known why. Uh, it seems it's a genetic thing and it's quite common. Likely bitten by mosquitoes as often as others. Yeah, when I lived in India, I got bitten often. About a 50-50 chance of experiencing motion sickness. Yeah, newborn hair, likely little baby hair. Um, gonna have to check that on a photograph. Likely no photic sneeze reflex. I don't think that's accurate. When I step outside in the sunshine and look at the sky, I do sneeze. I check that. Likely no red hair. Yeah, I haven't seen any red hair on me. Likely darker skin. Yeah, I think this is dark skin. Less likely to have stretch marks. Where? Uh, likely prefer salty. Definitely, spot on. Likely big toe longer. They seem pretty equal to me. It's a difficult one to say. Likely at least a little unibrow. Hmm. Is that a unibrow? Likely to wake up around 8.37 a.m. Not 8.38, 8.37 specifically. Likely no widow's peak. I don't think I have a widow's peak. Isn't, hey, isn't that a widow's peak? I don't know. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. And if you haven't checked out my previous episodes on 23andMe, then make sure you check them out as well. 